OK. Yes, this is a, it's a collaborative research project. Um, and I'm presenting the results of two, uh, two trial studies that we've done. The second of the trial hasn't been, uh, hasn't been published anywhere yet, so it's, uh, it's new data hot off the press. Um, so what is amblyopia? Um, derived from the Greek word for blunted sight, um, it's basically a lazy eye. So it's a condition of lazy eye. Now, most people in here, I'm sure, will know somebody who suffers from a lazy eye. Um, a lazy eye is, uh, is a, a development problem in, a, in early stages. So babies are basically born with very poor vision or blind, and the first thing they do for the first few weeks is learn how to see and eat. Um, and that's a process called perceptual learning. Now, amblyopia develops when there's an interruption in that, that process. Uh, normally, the thing to note is there's nothing anatomically wrong with the eyes. It's to do with the process of learning that's interrupted. So how does that get interrupted? Well, there's uh, a few causes. Uh, one is a squint, so an eye is pointing in the wrong direction. Uh, the main one is uh, unequal refraction. So the eyes, I'm told, focus together. And if one of the eyes has a different refractive index to a, the other eye, then it's no way that both of the eyes can see the same object in full focus all the time. And the coping mechanism for that is for the brain to start disregarding the information that's coming from the eye that's blurred. Hence, you get a weaker eye, which is termed as a lazy eye. Um, often, you get the combination of the two. Now, whether one causes the squint, that, that's in, um, in discussion. It's not been proved. Uh, but it's a possibility. So, yeah, what's the common treatment? Um, and how does it develop? Well, that's just the flow chart of what happens. You get a displaced or blurred image. What the brain does is suppress the information from one of the eyes. And then that you develop amblyopia. So to treat it, you have to put the images back together. So, um, so either use glasses. Well, you usually use glasses. Treat the amblyopia by patching or penalization. And I'll, I'll tell you what patching and penalization are in a second. So you um, yeah, affect the good eye, force the other eye to work more, realign the eyes with surgery if it's required, and then just keep monitoring the situation. So that's sort of how it's treated at the moment. I was sort of hoping there might be a, a prize for the earliest reference, because um, patching has been done since at least 1743. Um, so it's a well-established method. So patching, you'll probably have seen children wearing a patch because it's uh, common all over the world. You stick a patch over the good eye, let the lazy eye force the lazy eye to work. Um, patching is often done for six hours a day for six weeks. is one of the standard treatments, so it's a long-term thing. Penalization, uh, just, as, just as difficult for the... For the subject is uh, eye drops that defocus the good eye so that, um, that, again, the lazy eye is forced to work together. So what's the problem with it? If we establish that uh, it can be treated, I've just got a little clip. <laughs> Yeah, it's really good to be in Britain. It's great to be in a place which is as miserable as Ireland. It's fantastic. Because <laughs> I, I come from, a, from a, you know, an Irish background from the 70s and 80s. I was a really weird looking little kid. I also had a special eye or a lazy eye or a bung eye or as I found out in Scotland, a cock eye! <laughs> That's what I had, and I had huge glasses to magnify the special eye. <laughs> just in case children from a distance couldn't see the special eye. <laughs> and then what did the doctors do? They put a patch over my good eye. <laughs> I spent half my childhood banging into shit. <laughs> I couldn't see anything. 
So that's Jason Bryan, um, obviously an Irish comedian, stand-up comedian. It's a clip from a BBC programme called Live at the Apollo, taken off YouTube. Um, surprisingly common among comedians, a lazy eye, probably a coping mechanism with, with some of the bullying that they received at school, but uh, you'd be amazed at how many, a higher proportion of stand-up comedians have a, a lazy eye than the normal co population. But it does um, sort of tell you what the problems with the, with the current treatment methods are. Uh, it takes a long time, really unpopular with the children because basically you're saying, yes, you've got something that works really well, we're going to take that away from you and force you to use the thing that doesn't work very well. Yeah, it's been said that it would never get ethical approval, the, the, the treatment method, if it was proposed as a treatment method these days. I'm not sure whether that's true, but yeah, it is quite uh, difficult. Yeah, results in poor compliance. You're trusting the children, that you, young child that you send to school with a patch on to keep it on all day, yeah, when they can easily rip it off. So you get v pretty poor compliance. They don't like it, has a real negative impact on school and family life. Uh, it becomes a battle within the family that the adult is forcing the child to do something that they really like. So there's all the sort of long-term uh, development uh, issues around that as well. Uh, again, with, um, with the eye drops, uh, similar, similar problems, same treatment. All right, they've not got a patch over their eye, but the side effects uh, are, are, are bad or can be bad as well. Um, yeah, so it's um, but a, a, difficult, um, a difficult treatment. Again, for other problems, uh, it's not that effective. Yeah, 70 per 80 percent of people who are diagnosed with a lazy eye still have a lazy eye into adulthood, so it doesn't work that well. It does treat them, it does improve vision, but it seldom completely improves vision. Um, and there's no dicoptic si simulation, stimulation, so what they're not doing is forcing both eyes to work together or training both eyes to work together. So the minute the patch is taken off, you can get double vision, but um, it also, what can happen is you just, the eyes drift back into their old routine. So you often get, uh, the, once the, the treatment has stopped, you will see an improvement, but that improvement, and you, you lose that benefit. Um, yeah, so why bother treating, I suppose, if the treatment is so bad and it's so, uh, if not so effective? Um, yeah, it's not life-threatening. You don't miss what you've never had. Well, there, are, uh, there is a need for it, an established need. It affects 2 to 4% of the population. Has anyone in here had a lazy eye or got a lazy eye? Nobody. Yeah, that, I don't, that doesn't surprise me because being a... Being, um, a stereographer wouldn't possibly be your first choice of career if you can't see out of two eyes, would it? So, um, yeah, but generally when you ask a, a, an audience of this size, you will find three or four people who have got a lazy eye and still have a lazy eye. It accounts for the majority of, um, of eye appointments in the UK. Uh, there's a national screening program in most countries. Uh, yes, definitely increased bullying in children, but that's partly due to the treatment methods. Statistically more likely to be admitted to A&E, this is a fact that's quoted a lot. I've, I've tried to track a reference down and I've not found a reference, but it's quoted a lot by people. Um, definitely an increased risk of bl blindness because you've only got one eye now and the chances of you losing an eye during your life are, are, uh, are yeah, there is a chance. So, it needs to do it. So, summarising the condition, yeah, it's a common condition. It's a problem of training the brain. It's not a problem with the, uh, the vision system in itself. The current tr treatments aren't that good, really disliked by the patients, and they don't teach the eyes to work together. So, on to what we've done. The IBIT system. This is a schematic of the system that we use that, that's been developed at Nottingham quite a long time ago, at least 10 years ago. Um, the first implementation of this system was like this, using mirrors and, and lenses to separate the images to, uh, to the different eyes. And the central um, theory is what you do is you get your child to play a game and you present different parts of the image to the different eyes and you force the lazy eye to work harder. I'll, do, I'll talk about that in a little bit more detail in a second. Um, but using games, there's lots of evidence that 
playing computer games res results in, um, in, in improved visual performance for normal people. There's lots of evidence that playing long hours of computer games doesn't do a lot for your health in other areas of your health, but it doesn't seem to do anything bad to your eyes. So there are, um, there are good reasons to use games for it rather than other things. So what we did um, is produce a game using commercially available stereo equipment. We always use 2D games, though. There are no stereo content that I'm going to show you. It's all 2D games. Um, so yeah, interactive games and videos, uh, good, uh, good compliance for the children because they like playing the computer games, um, and good control by the clinician because they can monitor and control what the child is doing all the time. So what is it? Well, uh, we used a game called Nooks, which is a sort of uh, side-scrolling for some of the levels uh, platformer and has levels of sort of space, top-down, space invader type game mechanic where complicated scenes occur, things fly in from the edge, you've got to shoot them, you've got to pick up, uh, avoid boulders, pick up coins and power-ups and things like that. Just a standard 2D video game with quite a few levels. And what we did is separate the lazy eye, what the lazy eye sees and the normal eye sees. So the lazy eye would see the game with the sprite and all the bullets, and the normal eye would see the background, which has got moving elements in it, but elements that don't usually have a part in the game, although we can control that. So you get the lazy eye, the normal eye, view, play the game with the glasses on, and for, you're forcing the lazy eye to work a lot harder because it's the one that's seeing the sprites. Um, yes, here's another screen. Uh, the, good thing about Nooks is it's, a, it's very complicated scenes. So here you've got a complex sort of boulder field where the lazy eye sees the boulders that have to be shot and the, obviously the main sprite is there, but there are boulders in the scene as well that are, are visible to the other eye that are moving but haven't, don't have to be shot by the player. So again, the lazy eye swapped, swapped lazy eyes for that scene. Um, and the treatment, I'm not the, the results I'm showing you don't use this effect, but the, the software that we developed had the ability to split the scene into two to make it even harder for the, for the player. Um, so the player here sees some of the uh, items that they have to be seen in the lazy eye and, and a mixture of the bullets and the other items that you see to the good eye. So now you're working the two eyes together a lot harder. So. Uh, we're trying to aim at proper dichoptic sim simulations there. Um, yeah, the results of the first trial, which is basically a, a very small trial with five, sorry, ten children. Um, what you see is, just to explain the graph a little bit, is that lower is better. These are logmar, so which is minimal, minimum angle of resolution. So the smaller, the better. Basically, 1.1 1 .1 is one line on a, on a letter chart. Um, and you can see that I think all of the children improved their vision over six-week treatment. Now, six-week treatment here is once a week for half an hour. It's not six hours per day for every day. So uh, treatment times are, are very, very small. Uh, the real reason for doing this trial is basically to check that you're not doing anything bad, so nothing, nothing terrible, and then you can go on to the next trial. So yeah, very encouraging first results. The problems with the, the, the pilot study, the first thing was it wasn't a blinded trial, so everybody who took part in the trial was, was being treated. It was uncontrolled, there wasn't a control group, um, and 10, 10 samples too small with no control is not statistically um, not, not proper statistically relevant. Positives are uh, the vision improved in all of the um, subjects. There were no serious side effects. Um, and it demonstrated, it, obviously, it was worth further study. So the next trial on 75 patients. This is new data. It's not been published anywhere yet. It will be in the literature within the next year, we'd hope. <laughs> so, certainly sooner than that, if possible. Um, so the main trial followed this procedure. Um, which was 
just checking my time, uh, 25 patients in each group. Um, there's an IBIT game treatment, a non-IBIT game treatment, and an IBIT DVD. Very quickly what those are is the non-treatment method. You've seen what the treatment method is. The non-treatment method was they were wearing exactly the same glasses, still shuttered, it's but just both eyes saw exactly the same scene. The DVD, this is a mock-up. Um, what they did is they watched the DVD, and the DVD was only viewed to the lazy eye. The normal eye either got a black, um, a black scene, a black rectangle, or a, an average color rectangle. I'm not sure which they used it. The, the clinicians had the opportunity to use either of those. And there was a background around the thing that remained static. Um, the results are, were very, very good. Compliance was excellent. We got 90, over 90% 90 compliance. And this is, compliance is difficult for 75 studies because they had to attend the hospital once a week to do it. It had to be under proper, um, proper medical instrument trials um, conditions. So compliance was very, very good. Um, other results, surprising results, are everybody improved. Yeah, even the control group improved. Now, yeah, our questions are, which we don't know yet because these are new results, are why did everyone, um, why did everybody improve? Uh, it may be that our control group wasn't a proper control group because we're still, they're still using shutter glasses. So we're still stimulating both eyes albeit with the same sim stimulation, but we're still stimulating both eyes. So we need to look at that. Our problems are really, really short treatment trials. Because they had to be done under proper conditions, they were always in the, um, always had to be done in, uh, in the hospital. Um, so obviously we need to, to, to have a method of increasing that. Um, the good things uh, it says down as a problem, but it's really very good results because the vast majority of those 75 had been treated before for amblyopia and had not responded well for patching and other methods. So we've taken a, a subset, a group that all, already have, have re responded badly to traditional treatment. And we didn't compensate for, for squints, so there was no compensation for squints in there whatsoever. Um, it needs pointing out that four subjects withdrew to, due to developing double vision during the thing, so it wasn't a, a, complete, um, a completely risk-free treatment. So summary, yeah, two, two trials de um, demonstrating promise, risk of double vision, but very, very high exceptions. We have got more money to develop this further and sort of address some of the other questions that we've got. Okay.